Hello folks, Osprey here. Today we're going to be talking bushcraft. We're going to cover emergency signaling. Whether you're stuck in a boat, your vehicle could break down on the side of the road. You could be trapped in some rubble in a collapsed building. Or you could be lost in the woods. Either way, you'll have to have an understanding of the internationally accepted rules and methods for signaling. You'll also have to have an understanding of some of the tools that can be used for signaling. Like all survival skills, you must have an understanding, but you must also practice the skills on a regular basis so that you can use them efficiently in an emergency situation. Let's get started. Alright, so we're going to start off the video by doing a little experiment. I'd like to see exactly how far sound and light will travel. So the plan is to go out in the dark on a country road. Uh, we're going to test out the horn on a 2011 F-150. See how far we can hear that. We would be uh, setting up the camera, then I'm going to drive 250 meters and do 250 meter intervals for the testing. So like I said, we'll try out uh, three beeps of the horn on a 2011 F-150. Then we're going to try three blows of a whistle, which is the Silva Sportsman Tool 625L. Uh, nice little tool. It's got the... Um, whistle itself which is listed at 125 decibels we've got a liquid filled compass uh, on top uh, the cardinal points and the north arrow are luminescent we've got a thermometer on the back side which is both in Fahrenheit and Celsius and we have a let me see if I can get it out here. We've got a magnifying glass that folds in and out. Uh, good for checking out maps, uh, good for starting a fire, uh, also useful for first aid if you have to uh, see if you have a splinter of some sort. Uh, it comes with a lanyard, safety lanyard, and finally the whole unit floats as well. So those will be the two sound devices. And finally, to see how far light will travel, we're going to try out the Phoenix TK35 UE. So for uh, Ultimate Edition is what it stands for. It comes with a nice case, great lights. Uh, uh, what are some of the features here? Uh, it uh, comes with a LED bulb with a lifespan of 50,000 hours. The max output is 3,200 lumens. It's powered by the 18650 rechargeable batteries. These last a long time. All right, made by Phoenix as well. What else we got? We've got five output modes plus a strobe and an SOS uh, uh, type of signal as well. We've got a tail stand capability, which means it will stand on end. Um, it has a high strength, uh, non-rusting uh, aluminum body, uh, scratch resistant finish, a tough lens with anti-reflective coating on it. So for the modes, we have the two buttons here, whereas the on-off switch is the large one, and we've got the mode selector at the bottom. So the on-off switch, there's the Eco, which is at 20 lumens, that will last uh, for 152 hours. Next is the low setting, 100 lumens, looking at about 30 hours. Next is the medium setting at 350 lumens. Battery should last about 10 hours. Then we've got the high setting, which is 1,000 lumens, battery life of 3 hours. And finally, we have the turbo mode which is 3,200 lumens, and you're going to drain the battery in about an hour and a half. 
If you hold the function button, you'll get the strobe setting, which is great at getting somebody's attention. And the strobe setting is at 3200 lumens. If you hold the mode setting a little bit longer, you actually get an SOS signal, which could be broadcasted uh, uh, just continuously. That SOS signal is at 100 lumens, so your battery life will last quite a while. You're looking at about 38 hours of signaling with that. Uh, just to get back to your regular setting, you press that one more time, and then off again. Okay. So we're going to go for a field test. Okay. We're doing the uh, field test with a Silva whistle, a uh, high intensity flashlight, LED flashlight, and we're testing out the horn on an F-150. We're going to be doing the test at 250 meter intervals. I know that I have some light pollution at the other end where the uh, neighborhood starts, but we'll uh, give it a shot anyways. Well, the results were clear from the uh, field test. The way to signal would be through uh, light sources, flashlights, fires. Sound uh, definitely doesn't travel as far. So the horn was effective to about 250 meters. Anything beyond that, we couldn't hear the uh, truck horn anymore. The whistle was good to 1,000 meters, so one kilometer. You could hear the whistle faintly and uh, we stopped the testing at 1500 meters, 1 1.5 kilometers, and we could still clearly see the light from the uh, Phoenix flashlight. So there you go. If you have the opportunity, always use light sources as a way of signaling for help. Let's cover some of the basic methods of uh, signaling and what is understood internationally as a distress signal. So you can start off with whistles, 
We can use flares, so handheld flares or flare guns, flashlights, uh, banging on pipes or structural steel if you're in a collapse. You could use radio communication if you're uh, fortunate enough to have a radio, cell phone obviously if you're within range or if you have one, fires, uh, anything in three again is uh, understood, gunshots, uh, what I've uh, seen online is that anything in uh, one minute intervals repeated is understood as a distress. Signaling mirrors, flags, uh, survey tape, uh, leaving uh, paper and uh, marker signs around indicating your location or your direction, uh, spot devices, uh, car horn, Morse code using the SOS, uh, three short, three long, three short, so using smoke, so either smoke bombs or else smoke from a fire, using a fog horn or a boat emergency uh, horn, uh, waving your arms up and down, uh, orange tarp uh, with a black circle and a black square on them. They're pre-made, they're available at uh, stores and online. A mayday on the radio, repeated three times. And uh, marking SOS on the ground with either logs or uh, rocks. Make sure that it's big enough so that it can, see, can be seen from the air if somebody's looking for you. All right, so some, those are some of the methods that can be used for signaling. Uh, again, anything in three generally is understood internationally as a distress. And uh, I think next is uh, let's go see if we can make a uh, fire and uh, generate some white smoke. All right, we're back outside for a uh, to build our signal fire. We're going to see how we can uh, create a smoke generator here. So we're going to build the ones that are uh, off the ground onto a uh, tripod. Uh, Put a bunch of uh, kindling in the center, find some birch bark, and then uh, wrap that all up with some uh, green boughs, see if it works fine, to generate a uh, large quantity of white smoke. I think the idea of having it off the ground on a tripod is it makes it more visible from a distance for the flames, but the smoke and the fire get a lot of oxygen, the oxygen coming in from the bottom, which really uh, increases the speed of the burn and the amount of white smoke you get. So I'll start putting this together. Alright, so the signifier is complete. We uh, built it in a tripod. Uh, again, just to review, lots of oxygen is going to get in from the bottom to help that uh, fire tetrahedon, right? We need heat, fuel, uh, oxygen, and a chemical chain reaction, right? Those are the four components of a fire. So I had to cheat a little bit, had to use a little bit of newspaper, couldn't find any birch bark around here, I'm just in the backyard. So uh, let's see what this puppy will do. Starting pretty good already.
All right, so Osprey here. You can see that the uh, signal fire worked all right, generated some white smoke. I would, uh, next time I would put a little bit more fuel on the inside, make sure that we burn all the green boughs. So remember uh, the green boughs were uh, what generated the white smoke. If you've got a background that's a little, uh, that's a little brighter where you're looking for a black smoke, that might have actually worked better on this white uh, snow here. Uh, then you have to start introducing some like uh, pieces of tarp, uh, rubber, styrofoam. It's not environmentally friendly, but uh, it's uh, made to get you out of this situation, right? You want to get rescued, so unfortunately sometimes you can't, you can't be eco-friendly all the time, all right? Your life is more important. So uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Go, 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 go